presents I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. OK, well, we're now going to play a game called Sound Charades. It's based on the erstwhile TV show Give Us a Clue, which featured Lionel Blair, the dancer and father of the Labour leader, Ramsay MacDonald. <laughs> We're now going to play a game called Sound Charades. It's based on Give Us a Clue, the seminal TV show which put Lionel Blair's name on the map. <laughs> Somewhere off the coast of Belgium. <laughs> Our next round is called Sound Charades. It's based on the erstwhile TV show called Give Us a Clue, starring Lionel Blair, who I understand once worked in this very theatre. Indeed, backstage staff still consider the role he essayed here as the very peak of his professional achievement when he spoke the immortal line, so, that's two with milk and one with sugar. <laughs> it's time to play the game called Sound Shiraz. This is run on similar lines to the TV show that put Lionel Blair where he is today, visiting his aunt in Solihull. <laughs> Okay, our next round is called Sound Charades. It's based on Give Us a Clue, the TV show where Lionel Blair and Una Stubbs got up off the sofa and performed against the clock. <laughs> and with the, recent, with the recent change of government, there's an interesting double connection here. Una Stubbs used to appear as the TV wife of Tony Booth, who is father-in-law to Tony Blair, while Lionel Blair is in fact father of the Labour Prime Minister, Harold Wilson. <laughs> Sadly, this program is no longer on our screens, following an unfortunate pre-watershed incident in which one competitor was asked to describe an audience with Bob Monkhouse using hand gestures alone. <laughs> and what a fine entertainment it was. Fans, fans still speak in hushed tones of the day. Una Stubbs, her hands a blur, managed three men in a boat in less than 90 seconds. <laughs> Who can possibly forget Lana Blair and Eunice Stubbs doing all kinds of everything against the clock? <laughs> the show's still going on in various guises, but connoisseurs agree that the original lineup was best. No one who witnessed the event will ever forget that sparkle in Lionel Blair's eye as he received free willy from Michael Astrup. <laughs> For two minutes. The undisputed expert on the show was Lionel Blair, but even he needed two whole minutes on Harold Pinter's caretaker. <laughs> the expert's expert was, of course, Lionel Blair, who can never forget opposing team captain Nuna Stubbs sitting open-mouthed as he tried to pull off 12 angry men in under two minutes. <laughs> Get the show's now famous Commonwealth tour when Lionel Blair jumped up and displayed his passage to India for the full two <laughs> And who will ever forget the show's American tour, including their special White House performance? That was the legendary occasion when Eunice Stubbs, her hands going like tiny steam hammers, scored maximum points for pulling off all the President's men. <laughs> In under 90 seconds. <laughs> the next round is called Sound Charades. 
It's based on that great TV show, Give Us a Clue, which has survived on our screen since the 1970s, thanks to excellent production values, fine performances, and the spread of cheap cable channels. <laughs> and what consistently fine guests they have. A recent edition included the woman who used to do that coffee commercial, a bloke who used to be married to someone out of Emmerdale Farm, <laughs> Barman Three from Lovejoy, <laughs> and Lionel Blair. <laughs> There's no mention of who he used to be. <laughs> the master of the game was Lionel Blair, and who can forget the unbridled enthusiasm with which he picked up a Scottish soldier to finish off against the clock? <laughs> Who will ever forget the Grandmaster himself, Lionel Blair, winning in a world record time of 3.5 seconds when he brilliantly mimed anchors away by signaling first word sounds like and <laughs> and pointing to himself and Timmy Mallet. <laughs> The game is based on Give Us a Clue, starring Lionel Blair, the man whose talent made the show what it is today. <laughs> Padding for the schedule on cable channel 47. <laughs> the undisputed mime maestro was, of course, Lionel Blair, and who can forget the look of relish in his face when he was given two minutes on the African Queen? <laughs> And who can forget that breathtaking finish when Lionel Blair came from behind and had Dirty Harry licked in under two minutes? <laughs> and who will ever forget the relish in Lionel Blair's eye as he got stuck into Howard's end for two minutes? <laughs> And who can fail to remember the occasion he scored double points by skillfully using both hands in different actions to finish off one man and his dog in under 30 seconds? <laughs> the undisputed master of the genre was surely Lionel Blair. No one who saw it will ever forget the gleam of relish in Lionel's eyes. He put everything he could manage into the talented Mr. Ripley for two whole minutes. <laughs> the undisputed my master was Lionel Blair, who used to get quite emotional at times. Who can never forget the tear of pleasure in his eyes? He bent over the chairman's desk to receive a man called Horse. <laughs> we all recall how film titles were demonstrated in mime against the clock by the grand master of the game, Lionel Blair, who would use just his hands to delight his team's members. <laughs> Of this. <laughs> None of us can forget the relish with which he once gave Melvin Hayes and Christopher Biggins yanks for two whole minutes. <laughs> the most highly skilled of all was Lionel Blair. <laughs> but how the tears of frustration welled up in his eyes during their Italian tour at not being allowed the use of his mouth to finish off two gentlemen of Verona. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Sadly, however, give us a clue, hasn't been made recently, so we'll never see what team captain Lionel Blair would have done with modern films. Lionel used to get quite emotional, and no doubt after two minutes against the clock, the talented Mr. Ripley would have put a lump in his throat. <laughs> Give us a clue certainly provided many memorable moments as the players performed against a strict time limit. We particularly recall one very early show when Una Stubbs scored maximum points after the teams took only a few seconds to recognise her fanny by gaslight. <laughs> Disputed master of the genre was Lionel Blair, who would use every ounce of his mime acting skills. None of us will ever forget the gasps of amazement when he spent a frustrating two minutes trying to fit in the whole of the man on the flying trapeze. <laughs> hmm. There's not too much double about that on top. <laughs> Give us a clue certainly provided many memorable moments as the players were given their titles on cards provided by the host, Michael Aspel. We particularly recall the unalloyed pleasure in Lionel Blair's face as he bent across the chairman's desk to receive Uncle Vanya. <laughs> Possibly the most versatile performer was Lionel Blair. And no one will ever forget the occasion he was given a town like Alice when he chose to do a silent impression of the author. Such was the performance, Eunice Stubbs gasped in amazement when she saw Neville shoot in Lionel's face. <laughs> in the... The master of the game for many years was Lionel Blair, whose skills became finely honed over the years. On one occasion, it took him but a matter of seconds to finish off Lucky Jim using only one hand. <laughs> Sadly, the show is no longer aired, but its stars still turn out at such events as celebrity cricket matches, which are not without their hazards. At the Oval last week, Eunice Stubbs nearly fainted in horror when she saw Lionel Blair receive a full toss on the chest from Christopher <laughs> Bigger. The expert's expert was Lionel Blair, and none of us will ever forget the look of gleeful anticipation in his eyes when he was offered Howard's End across Michael. <laughs> Again, do we? <laughs> Across Michael Aspel's desk. The undisputed expert's expert was Lionel Blair, who was particularly good at Mickey Mouse cartoons. However, he occasionally had to save the day when he was let down by his team. Una Stubbs still recalls how amazed she was when Christopher Biggins failed miserably with Fantasia, and Lionel was straight in behind him with his steamboat Willie. <laughs> So expert was the Grand Master Lionel Blair that he even managed to score points on an obscure TV documentary called Tales of Thuggery by indicating... <laughs> by indicating third word sounds like... <laughs> and calling for assistance from Christopher Biggins. <laughs> the most accomplished player was without doubt Lionel Blair. But on one fateful visit to entertain the troops, even he was caught out. 
Lionel was quite happy on the boogie woogie bugle boy, but he was hard pushed to finish off the rest of Company B in under two minutes. <laughs> Remarkably, the late Elvis Presley was a great fan of the original and even invited them to Graceland. Elvis was amazed by the player's skills in conveying titles against a time limit. His biography records how Lionel Blair bent over backwards trying to fit in all the King's men in under two minutes. <laughs> Sadly, the show is no longer aired, but regulars Lionel Blair and Christopher Biggins recently appeared on Stars in Their Eyes, where Lionel, singing Maggie May, came second to his old teammate. Biggins said Lionel's rod was outstanding, but he easily had it licked. <laughs> Grandmaster, who give us a clue, was, of course, Lionel Blair, but even he had the occasional day when he was off colour. However, Lionel could always rely on his loyal teammate, Christopher Biggins, to lend a hand whenever he was feeling a little dicky. <laughs> the undisputed master of the game was Lionel Blair, whose TV, whose TV career has sadly waned of late. He did, however, recently audition for I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Lionel's challenge was to sail a raft across a river with a small crew. But sadly, the raft hit a rock and sank, and what a look of horror there was on Ant's face when Lionel went down with both hands on deck. <laughs> Master of the game was, of course, Lionel Blair, who regularly amazed and delighted his teammates with his mime portrayals of the songs and movies of the so called black exploitation genre. Eunice Stubbs' eyes were out on stalks as she witnessed Lionel using his hands on Isaac Hayes' shaft for two minutes. <laughs> The show's virtuoso was without doubt Lionel Blair, but even he had his off days. His teammates recalled their apprehension during one close-run contest when, in the dying minutes, Lionel was given free willy by Michael Astor. <laughs> of course, he blew it. The undisputed grand master of the game was Lionel Blair. But following the show's demise, it seems his fortunes may be at a low ebb. Christopher Biggins was saying recently how he met him in the street and Lionel asked if he could bum him for a fiver. <laughs> the grandmaster of the genre was, of course, Lionel Blair, who became so... In who became so, as you heard, became so renowned internationally, he was invited to Paris to work as a mime coach. In fact, while Marcel Marceau was looking to brush up his hand technique, it was Lionel who pointed him to Lecoq. <laughs> the undoubted master was Lionel Blair, who used to work himself to a... He used to work himself to a frazzle, leaping up to be given his film titles on cards. Even when Lionel collapsed over the chairman's desk, receiving the dirty dozen, he could... St <laughs> he could still cope with the sting afterwards. The undisputed master of the genre was Lionel Blair. And <laughs> hopeful team members used to constantly badger Lionel with pleas to get a place on the show. Lionel relates how he once had Christopher Biggins on his back every night for a month. <laughs> before he finally got the part he wanted. <laughs> The 
The undisputed master of the game was Lionel Blair. <laughs> <laughs> His live performances were always loudly praised by his teammates. Eunice Tubbs recalls listening through the dressing room wall as Christopher Biggins and Melvin Hayes were still gushing ten minutes after Lionel blew them away on tour. <laughs> the original program is no longer aired but the undisputed mime master of Give Us a Clue is still Lionel Blair. Yay! He now tours the country doing exhibition performances in bars and restaurants, but sadly, last week's show had to be cancelled. Lionel's van broke down on the M6, and he had to pay £50 to be pulled off into a little chef. <laughs> The undisputed master who gave us a clue was Lionel Blair, who could mime virtually any TV or radio program. Lionel still does demonstration events and recently guested at the multi-faith conference, improvising his mime of thought for the day. Eyes were out on stalks as he started his impressions of the lesser-known presenters before Lionel blew the Bishop of Bath and Wells and the Chief Rabbi. <laughs> The undoubted master of the genre was Lionel Blair, whose unique, skill, whose unique skills were legendary. Sadly, the show is no longer aired here, but there are plans in Los Angeles to revive the show for American TV. So, Lionel is to be put on a plane to see how he goes down on the pilot. <laughs> The grand mime master who gave us a clue was Lionel Blair, but since the, since the show ended, he's confined to the occasional pantomime appearance, and they say he's becoming difficult to work with due to his mood swings. In this year's Snow White, they said one minute Lionel could be feeling happy. <laughs> LAUGHTER And the next he'd come all over grumpy. <laughs> The undisputed mime master who gave us a clue was team captain Lionel Blair. <laughs> when the show was scrapped, his team was devastated to the point of tears. But ever the trooper, Lionel took a video round to Christopher Biggins, and they pulled themselves together over the fabulous Baker Bell. <laughs> The undisputed master of the game was Lionel Blair, who was particularly good at the Rocky series of movies. Christopher Biggins relates how Lionel would visit his dressing room to hone his impression of Sylvester Stallone beating his opponents, often going down several times before knocking one out. LAUGHTER